right, good afternoon. Welcome to the 5G Summer Speaker Series on 5G for Entertainment. My name is Erin Rainey. I lead the Tech Experience Program here at T-Mobile. And we are excited to welcome you to the third session in our speaker series. And this is a fun one. It's all about entertainment. And when you think about elevating entertainment across media, concerts, gaming, sports, through shared, immersive, interactive experiences, it's so cool. And today, we're going to talk about how 5G technologies are going to enable some of these exciting experiences for entertainment. All right, so join me. Let's welcome our amazing panelists out on stage. All right, welcome. All right, well, thanks for joining today. Uh, we have some incredible panelists here uh, for our discussion on entertainment. And I'm going to do a few brief intros. Uh, so first, we have John McKay. He is head of Teradici Strategic Alliances at HP. John leads strategic partnerships in developing joint solutions for remote collaboration and productivity in media and entertainment and other industries. Prior to joining Teradici, John was Director of Alliances for Cloud and HP Solutions at Dell EMC and has extensive experience in product and business development roles at Teradici, Dell, and HP in enterprise and hybrid infrastructures and technologies. The Tech Experience team has been working with HP Teradici over the past few years and putting our network to the test for cloud gaming. And we happen to have a demo running here in the back near the drone zone, so be sure to check that out after our panel today. Thanks for joining, John. Next, we have Corey LaPlante. He's Chief Operating Officer of Mix Halo. Corey leads revenue and operations for Mix Halo, an augmented audio platform powered by cutting edge wireless networking technologies. In a prior life, he was a corporate litigator and nonprofit executive. Mix Halo is also a graduate of the 5G Open Innovation Lab and has created technology that delivers high quality audio real time to attendees wearing headphones at concerts or any live event. In fact, this past July, Mix Halo hosted a concert at T Mobile's headquarters and demonstrated exactly how 5G can enhance the audio listening experience. Thanks for joining, Corey. All right, and next we have Rick Velacquier. Rick has been with T-Mobile since 2018, leading strategic initiatives with our strategy teams to evolve T-Mobile from being a telco to a techco. Prior to T-Mobile, Rick was a strategy consultant at IBM, founded several startups, and consulted some of the largest brands as we know. Most recently, Rick has joined the T-Mobile Advanced and Emerging Technology team to work with startups and innovative companies that are using T-Mobile 5G to create brand new categories. Rick's passion for strategy and technology, along with his love for the people at T-Mobile, has made him a force for good and pushing boundaries like never before. Rick has also been an incredible partner for Tech Experience and is crazy passionate about 5G innovation. Thanks for joining, Rick. All right, and then finally, we have Tom Buffalano with Live View. Tom is Director of Business Development and Partnerships and has been an executive in sports and entertainment industry for more than 25 years with MTV Networks, CBS Sports, and LTN Global Communications. He has had roles in sales and business development, marketing, programming, and production, and has been at the forefront of content creation, distri distribution, and monetization utilizing advances, advancements in technology. Tom is focused on developing partnerships that will complete its current business and expand opportunities to generate incremental revenue from new businesses. LiveView has been an incredible partner for Tech Experience as well as we launched our virtual program at the start of the pandemic, providing the ability to live stream our video tours of our centers over T-Mobile's network. Thanks for joining us. So again, let's give our panelists a warm welcome. Very impressive. So, 5G Networks provides faster speeds, higher bandwidth, and lower latency that will supercharge and elevate the world of entertainment, providing new options for streaming, game, uh, streaming content, live events, gaming, and other high-quality, immersive, and customized and interactive experiences across a variety of connected devices. The goal of our panel today is to have some insightful discussions on how 5G capabilities will enhance entertainment, what's possible, and the ecosystem to make it happen. So let's get started. So here's the plan. I'm going to start off and ask our panelists a few questions. And then we're going to turn it over to our audience so you guys get your questions ready. 
All right, so the first question, what is the greatest impact 5G will have on entertainment, and what are you most excited about? We want to go ahead and start, John. Great. So uh, HP Teradici, if you're not familiar, we're all about the production side of entertainment. So uh, in the past couple of years, a lot of us have had an opportunity to experience staying at home, whether we wanted to or not, uh, and having to uh, establish new ways of working. When I uh, work with the studios and we start to look at what's that next opportunity look like, it matches the new name we've come up for our technology of HP Anywhere. What we're starting to see is people leverage 5G, no, no longer because I have to work remote, but because I want to. And I want to work in different ways in different places. So uh, in entertainment, uh, a lot of our uh, production uh, conversations are with studios doing shots, uh, dailies, uh, activities on scene, on location. Workers who have decided that they want to work in different regions, different areas, uh, and hiring talent in different places that you didn't have to or didn't necessarily recruit in before because now you can enable that type of workforce where they are. So I think that's the, the most exciting thing that we're seeing is uh, new ways of applying 5G with the performance that I demand for editing, for design, for graphics intensive workloads, but wherever I want to be. All right, great, that's great. Thank you very much. Corey? Yeah, so um, we're in, in the live fan experience space. Um, so Mix Halo is an augmented audio platform for live events. And we do that by leveraging real-time technologies and delivering audio directly to your smartphone and then a pair of headphones. So in sports, that means giving you multiple channels of play-by-play -play commentary while you're in the venue. And you have that commentary in ultra real-time. So it's not LeBron is back at the other side of the court and you're still hearing the commentator call that big dunk. It's happening as it, you know, they're, they're calling that as it happens. And in music, we deliver the in-ear audio feed that musicians have on stage, and we basically hit you exactly when the PA hits you. Otherwise, there would be this kind of echo effect, right? So when you talk about how 5G will change um, entertainment, I go immediately to live entertainment, and I think about augmenting that live experience. That requires lightning-fast speeds um, because you always have a visual reference. It's happening right in front of you. So any augmentation that's taking place needs to be time aligned. And we work with T-Mobile because we want to see that vision at scale. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Great. Thanks, Corey. Rick? Yeah. Uh, in terms of what's most exciting, I think it's live events audio. And the reason I say that, I, most of what I see in terms of uh, folks predicting the future of 5G at live events, it's all about augmented reality. But unless we're all wearing some sort of lightweight augmented reality glasses, if the second you look through a screen, you're out of the live event, right? Whereas audio is an enhancement to the live event itself. And so I think, I think we're going to see a lot of enhancement in live events with audio. But the other thing that I was thinking about over here, like how is 5G going to change entertainment? I think one of the things that we're missing is the ability to watch together remotely not just watch together, but watch and communicate together remotely. And you can't do that without great uh, latency, right? So two people on T-Mobile's network should theoretically be able to share and watch anything on their screen and talk about it simultaneously with enough low, low enough latency that's as if they're in the same room together. And I think that's completely missing out of entertainment today. Yep, that's a great one, Rick. Thank you. Hi, Aaron. Hello. <laughs> um, so I'd like to get to know my audience. Uh, how many people out there have used a LiveView um, product, which you can see over there, or have used LiveView solutions in any way, shape, or form to deliver video over bonded cellular and 5G in particular? Raise your hands. OK. You. You win. Um, so LiveView invented, and I don't use this term loosely, but invented bonded cellular and we work with T-Mobile um, specifically on using 5G to get live video feeds out of any environment where we have access to 5G um, and into any environment like Teradici. So you can deliver live video in real time, ultra low latency, 4K, um, you know, high quality video from anywhere to anywhere. So what 5G gives us the ability to do literally is to create workflows from anywhere in the world to anywhere in the world, 
low latency, high quality, that you can have a very focused and concentrated uh, production workflow, or you can have a, a widely dispersed production workflow. Um, and using, you know, using 5G especially gives you an advantage over, well, you know, how much do I need to spend to park a satellite truck somewhere? How much you know, cable do I have to run? How much fiber connectivity do I need? What's the bandwidth I need? We use HEVC protocols or algorithms to really take advantage of as much bandwidth as we have. Um, and 5G enables us to do that. And as we go from not just public 5G, but to slicing private 5G, it gives us a much more um, uh, I don't know, vibrant or uh, robust bandwidth to use to get video out. Um, and that, to me, the promise of 5G is really untethered uh, live video and production workflows that really don't exist or haven't existed up until now. Rick? <laughs> yeah, this, this, um, this brings up another sort of concept that I'm starting to see across startups, which is presence projection. So in a 5G world, something that you can do that you couldn't do easily before is project yourself into a completely distant environment or project that environment back to yourself. So one example uh, is the Halo car. So the way that this car operates is you've got a remote pilot sitting in an office who's driving a taxi car somewhere else, right? And so what they're doing is they're taking that, that environment that the car sees and projecting it back to where they're sitting and then they're taking their own uh, intentions and projecting those out to the car. And without that latency, you can't do that. But there are so many other situations where presence projection is, is uh, going to open up a lot of doors, right? Like video, uh, moving high resolution video from anywhere to anywhere, any, any one point. If I was to project, like, where is the volume of traffic going to be over our network in five years? It's video, but today video is a large part of our, maybe the majority of our traffic, but it's downloaded video. This is video going the other, the other way, right? For humans, like the Halo car, but also for machines. Like there's no situation I can think of where you can't put a high definition camera on something and have computer vision creating value by monitoring it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I think you know, hearing from everybody here, it represents what we talk about, the ecosystem, to bring all this together. Uh, so I'd like to maybe hear from you guys, as you've seen from your perspective in leveraging 5G in some of these use cases, who is part of this ecosystem? What has to come together to make all this work? Go I'll, for it. You're I'll not jump in again. <laughs> okay. So uh, I, I kind of like it. We have a nice progression in the conversations here. So I'm at the, again, the beginning of the production flow. And when we look at uh, what we're addressing, it's remote desktops, remote uh, access to uh, applications without having to download um, all of those applications. Our technology is pixel-based for um, remote desktops. It gives the ability of providing a very robust, uh, very color-rich, line-accurate, uh, low-latency type of experience and uh, enable the production for um, editors, for artists, for um, colorists to uh, be able to work on the production elements. So when I think of the ecosystem around 5G, it's partnerships that we have with Avid, with Un, uh, Unreal Engine with uh, Adobe, tools that are used in those types of environments. Visual Studio for creating games uh, and game dev. Collaboration and the ability to use 5G for people to um, multiple, uh, work on the same projects at the same time. Editors and um, producers to be able to review projects at the exact same instance when they're on completely different sides of the country. Things that make the studio now wherever you are and how you want to connect it are areas that we represent in that beginning of the workflow of creating the content, of creating the evening news, of creating uh, your next uh, uh, Mandalorian or other types of uh, shows that you'll see. That uh, those are the areas that we play in when um, we work with media and entertainment and the ecosystem that we count on, which are the applications you used to depend on in a very robust system right next to you. 
Yeah, I think the creators are a really important part of the ecosystem. So we, at Mix Halo, for example, we don't just take the music that any artist is creating and put it out there you know, for fans to consume via our platform. The artist needs to give us that content, right? So we need to work with artists um, and sports teams who are embracing innovation and want to be on the cutting edge and doing these things. And so um, for us, they're certainly part of the ecosystem. Um, and then, of course, the consumers, right? Like we need consumers and fans who are out there and demanding these fun new technologies and using them and validating you know, the work that we're all doing um, together. Um, that's where my mind goes immediately. You know? um, I, I, th I think what, what we need for infrastructure uh, is a smart agent. So everybody here is creating this disconjuncted pool of uh, digital resources that you have access to. So you have access to entertainment across multiple channels. Not only do you have access to it, but you also have preferences. You have position where you are. You have access to your uh, financial resources. You have access to all of your social accounts. And wherever you go, all of these resources uh, are accessible through your mobile device. No matter, no matter where you go, right? I think sort of the two next steps, one is that, that is projected onto other medium. It's not just your phone, but it's coming through your phone. So 5G allows you to take any of that, take it from your phone and put it, you know, I can put it up on this screen or uh, those speakers or wherever. But I also need a smart agent to start selecting for me. So I walk into a room, my Netflix is available. I want to pay Corey 20 bucks. I should just be able to say, hey, pay Corey 20 bucks and we know, oh, here's the bank account Rick likes to use when he pays people, and oh, I know who Corey is, he's in Rick's, uh, you know, Rick's You can just give me the 20 bucks. 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I am kind of old school on, on cash. I carry cash. But, but I think that smart agent of like, since, since everything that you have available around you is all available now through your phone, a smart agent to kind of tie it all together at once is the next step in infrastructure that we need to uh, bring 5G use forward. You know, a long time ago, a long 20 years ago, um, we talked about personal. And I think that 5G gives us the opportunity to really drill down into what, what we want to consume as consumers. So you talk about what it's going to be in five years. In five years, you should be able to have a menu, a smart menu, where you're literally consuming whatever's out there. So think of it as a giant, a wall, if you will, of content with unlimited amount of content that's being contributed through 5G onto this global platform. And along with that, you make personal choices. And then what Rick was talking about, all the other pieces of, of your own personalized life that you want to incorporate into that and it could be anything from, you know, from banking and maybe you want a finance course and, you know, or there are things, you know, or, or there, are, there are ads. Well, today, you know, no matter what you say into your phone, you get an ad on Facebook, right? So imagine the ultimate capability to do personalization of content and information so that you can cut out all of the noise that you don't want. And what is that worth to the content creator and and to anybody that, that is really doing any sort of transaction over, over 5G. It's just, it's a marriage that I think as we move forward in our lives, we're gonna wanna cut out all of the noise and really dive in on personalization in a way and a scale that we can't do today, but with 5G, it makes it all possible. Great, thank you. I do wanna go back, Corey, you brought up um, the end user, the customer, the consumer, uh, what are you seeing as a response with these new technologies and innovation? Are people receptive or are they excited? Is there a big learning curve or what have you been seeing? Yeah, I mean, two things come to mind. First of all is I think we all, anybody in the ecosystem in any way, like, can do a better job helping consumers understand 5G and the applications of 5G. I mean, I think you stop the average person on the street and they don't quite understand yet. And so we can use a lot of these low latency applications to help them get it because when they do get it and they do experience this, it's magic. They're totally blown away. So like at Mix Halo, 
It's interesting. It's hard to have somebody get that first Mix Halo experience. They're just kind of like, why would I wear headphones at a concert? I don't understand, which I get. And I literally said before I first use it and then promptly quit my law firm job and joined the company. Um, it's very easy to get somebody to have that second Mix Halo experience. In fact, what we hear them say more often than not is like, I can't go to a concert without this now. Like live music is kind of broken for them. Um, and so <clears throat> people quickly start to appreciate the value of these low latency applications. They start to see uh, entertainment and the possibilities in entertainment in different ways. But you really have to kind of spoon feed it to them. Um, and really show them like out in the wild, like this is what you can do. It's hard to make people understand that milliseconds mean something, yeah. <laughs> right? Truly. <laughs> like th that's the hard, until you experience yeah. it, it's very yeah. hard to get that millisecond concept across. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. We work in, in exactly those uh, same categories that, uh, in talking with studios, that the, the box, the, the high-end system that's right next to you has always been the focus. Then the corded experience. Uh, now we've uh, started to go to cloud connectivity. And as HP Teradici, we started helping customers see that they can get that same productivity with 5G. And there's just this uh, uh, you know, kind of this wow factor. I didn't know that I could use these high-demand applications from a cloud-based experience over 5G and have the same performance for my, my mouse, my pen when I'm drawing. Yeah, as an artist, milliseconds matter. Under 20 milliseconds is pretty critical. That's My pen is flowing. Everything looks great on a Wacom tablet. 40, 60, 80 milliseconds. My pen's over here. The art's over there. I'm suddenly thinking about what I'm doing for um, this machine versus the creativity I'm trying to do. So I'm starting to see it as a way of unleashing and really cutting the cord in a lot of ways for a lot of these productions of being able to take advantage of technologies that only a few years ago required you to be physically at a desk in a very robust system and now suddenly my monitor and my ability to deliver over a 5G device with my peripherals is what makes me productive. I don't need that machine suddenly to be right next to me. And I think that's some of the things we're seeing in the production side of things that are the aha moment of, you know, I didn't know I could do that. And, and even for us in technology adoption, up until 5G, we've not really supported utilizing our technology and these types of workloads over wireless connections. And now we're seeing it's better in many cases than hardwired connections that people have used. And, you know, we're focusing on latency and, like, yeah. quite rightfully, but the other piece of this is scale. So when you think about getting this in consumers' hands and validating these offerings, you have to plan for and be prepared for a day where it starts to catch on, right? So, like, at Mix Halo, we started out in the VIP space, and we would roll this experience out for 100 people, 250 people, et cetera. But you watch adoption in that limited quantity fill up pretty quickly. And you think about the stadiums and arenas we play in, and you plan for and hope for a day where everybody in the building is doing that. But that doesn't just happen, right? You need to work with infrastructure partners who can help you get to that place. So scale is a really important piece of this, too, so that we can bring it to as many consumers as possible. So one of the things, so LiveView, as I said uh, previously, we, we are delivering live video from anywhere to anywhere. Um, if you think about mega events, and scale is certainly part of this, if you think about mega events that, like the FIFA World Cup or the Olympics, and you want to tell a story, and you talk to an athlete, and you say, come to this location at this point in time, and we'll schedule you in, and we'll set you up, and you can tell a story. And they go, I can't make it. I'm going to be like warming up on the track or doing whatever, you can go get that story and you can deliver it. And by the way, you can get 100 stories at once and deliver it over 5G to anywhere that you want to deliver it to. In, in a live way, and I, when I talked about personalization before, and you say, listen, I, just, I want to see all the stories that come back on, you know, on gymnastics for the Olympics. And you go through and you shoot all of these, all of these you know, athletes and you're delivering it over 5G to a distribution network, that's, that's how the, the, the infrastructure works. People, the way I look at it is, what do you want to achieve 
creatively as much as you can think about what you want to achieve. We've got all these products and solutions at LiveView that can help you do that, but you're the artist and we're the brush, and 5G is also the paint. So how do you, what do you want to do tomorrow, but what can you do today? And then go in that direction. I mean, that's the way I look at, at all of how technology, enabling technology, works in the creative space. Which, which brings up a, a, like a point, which is if we're doing this right, we won't be appreciated. When you listen to Mix Halo and it works right, we're, if we do it right, we're invisible. And, and I don't know if people are going to love this application. They don't know the miracle behind it that, hey, this is going right to the audience and the speakers. It's also going up to the cloud to T-Mobile's network several miles away and back and up to your phone before the sound hits you. They, they're never going to understand it that. It just works for them. They're not going to yeah. see it. They're just going to have a great experience, a better experience than they've had before on yeah. our network. And that's the best that we can, we can hope for. Yeah, I, I joke one of the best compliments that uh, I get oftentimes in describing, especially showing uh, the technology over 5G, is people are like, well, I don't see the difference. And it's like, yes, that's, that's the point. That's it. Yeah, the magic is you're not experiencing anything other than what you expected. And, and then you can really become immersive, whether you're an artist or an editor and working on a project, you're uh, consuming or um, playing with other folks on uh, taking in the content and, and doing a group collaboration and things that it's now about the experience and not worrying about the technology. So another question, in addition to helping educate what 5G is and the scale, I'm glad you brought that up, what are some other things that need to happen or what are some challenges that we need to overcome to really move this forward? What are you guys seeing? Wow. I get into the capacity side of things. I think uh, you know, the continued expansion, um, the awareness and understanding of uh, 5G just in general, uh, that uh, helping people know you're hearing different perspectives already um, from us of different ways that it can be utilized. I think it's kind of a starting point, but really understanding that compared to prior versions of what wireless could do, we're really at a changeover stage. And, and I think some of it's just starting to explore what we can do uh, and various industries starting to look at how to take advantage of it, uh, how to cross leverage it. I, I think uh, Corey hit uh, a part of it of just understanding what this is and starting to think about how from my area of um, production through to uh, the consumer uh, access and, and use of uh, this information, where this can take you. Yeah. I you know, I don't mean to bring every answer like to live venues, but this is just this is the lens through which I see 5G and we experience it. With something like Mix Halo, there's a, it's it's one of the really good applications for edge compute. Um, so I'd love to see more edge out there. I think private 5G networks in these spaces, but the continued proliferation of the nationwide networks and obviously T-Mobile's done an incredible job here, right? But I think about a day when Mix Halo is in every major league baseball stadium in the country, right? Um, some of these ballparks are in less populated places than others, right? So it really needs to be sufficiently prolific. If we're going to throw 42,000 people, you know, in, um, in a not super, super urban area um, on this platform, um, then we need to see that continue to grow and expand. I think, I think we need um, an automated and smart way to prioritize traffic. Um, when I first came into T-Mobile and we were talking about 5G, it sounded like an unlimited resource. It's a thousand times broader and it's this and that. The, the reality is every last drop of data that we can move will be used. As people will come across a threshold when they realize what they can do with this and they will start doing it. Consuming, yeah. D consuming it. We will move more data than we ever dreamed of. Every bit of our network is going to be consumed. I think uploaded video is going to is going to drag us. So we have to find a way to figure out what needs to prior be prioritized so that those awesome like mixed halo type applications get the latency they need and things that can wait can wait to maximize what goes over our network. I I actually without offending everybody here who's you know above a certain age I think it's generational. I, I think <laughs> that, um, you know, me included, right? 
So if you had a bunch of 15-year-olds sitting around in this room and you said, here's all the things you can do with 5G, they'd be like, sure, do that every day. And I think part of the thing with, with the entertainment and broadcast industry in general is there are people who have had a career um, and they've done things in certain ways. The pandemic made them move out of their comfort zone, but now they're all rushing, not all, but a lot of people are rushing back to their comfort zone when what they should be doing is taking what they've learned, including all of, all of what we are talking about here today, and improve, it's not, it has nothing to do with cost savings, it has to do with improving your end product. And I think that gets lost on, on people um, who have been, again, doing things the same way for a lot of years. When I look at stuff that my son and his friends do, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Really, this is not a big deal. You know, have a, you know all these kids are putting up YouTube sites at 10. You know, he's not 10, but, um, you know, or, you know, video games, esports. The, the capability of them to understand not just how they're playing, but what's going on behind the scenes and things that they talk about playing Fortnite, what, what they talk about with each other about switching to the Middle Eastern servers because the North American servers are getting too much traffic. I mean, they're, that, they're going that deep into this technology. And I think, I think from a generational perspective, you're going to see in the next five people who, you know, grew up digital, say that, are going to say, yeah, we can do so much more with this technology than is being done currently. What, the esports remind me of a potential application that we haven't seen yet. Right now, this is being done, but it's delayed, like severely delayed by watching esports from any angle in that arena, so that if I'm an esports fan, I can go into that game and I can wander around and see it any way I want. I can follow people around, like almost as if I'm, I'm in it. I, I'm certain that that's coming. And you could not do that without crazy latency and great throughput. Well, iHeartMedia is now doing concerts on the Fortnite platform. So there you go, old, old media, traditional radio media, and Fortnite, there you go. Um, I mean, was Travis Scott had how many millions of people watching on Fortnite? So it's blending of platforms for the purpose of entertainment using technology that we have available to us today that can do things that we should, you know, we should all be working towards. All right, so I think we're going to turn over to the audience and see if uh, they have any good questions. We've got two microphones here. Uh, feel free to stand up, walk over, talk into the mic, and uh, let's see what you guys have. Any questions? Oh, here we go. So it's interesting that you spoke about automating the control about the quality of service, so to speak. But uh, in all your experiences, have you so far been using the public 5G, so to speak, or are you also working with T-Mobile on you know, uh, manipulating the quality of service. So for our perspective, we've been using what's available. So uh, it's, uh, in fact, a lot of the uh, testing that we did initially was uh, using uh, a, a cell phone and uh, connecting a laptop that was remotely connected to the virtual desktop. And that's where we saw performance that was um, better than ISP level performance, was in the performance um, band that we require to uh, be able to say that we fully support um, a remote connection. So uh, no special sauce, no, uh, no uh, um, unique configurations to make it work. It's, uh, in fact, the tethered environment, not the most desirable, but we um, saw even in that um, model, great performance. And, and at the end of the day, that's what matters to uh, the types of people that we work with as customers. Uh, and even for my, myself, I use 5G uh, connectivity a lot uh, for my own day-to-day -day work because I'm remote almost all the time. <laughs> yeah. Got it, got it. What about others? Everybody's using pretty much publicly available 5G? 
Yeah, so it's it, we've been on an interesting journey at Mix Halo because you know, Mix Halo was founded in 2016, and we were initially um, running Mix Halo over local Wi-Fi networks that we built, and then we figured out how to run over our partners' Wi-Fi networks. Um, but then we realized that we needed to develop a, a cellular product, and this is around the time that um, innovation centers like this were popping up, and you could. Um, you know, if there was mutual interest, go work with a major telco like this. And um, it was an opportunity for us to optimize. Because as Rick said, like, there are only so many applications out there, certainly at least as far as consumers know, where milliseconds really matter. Yeah. We are one of the few companies where if you can give me five milliseconds, I want it. I want it really bad, right? Yeah. Um, and if you can help me achieve scale, I really want that. So as Mix Halo is pushing out of this VIP space that I talked about earlier, where we're getting our initial kind of validation from consumers and figuring out what works and what doesn't, and we start to think about scale, that's when 5G becomes uh, much more important to us um, and why we develop relationships like the one that we have with Rick and Craig and the T-Mobile team. Got it. So the reason I'm starting to ask that question in general is you can imagine a venue with 40,000 users, and let's say they're all uploading video also, their personal videos over Instagram or other through 5G also. Now, you know, if you're using the public 5G to deliver your solution, your solution may start to be impeded. Well, so we're pretty, I mean, because we're just audio, like there's just not a lot of data flowing through. Um, but it's interesting that you bring up like social media. So we're, we're rolling out just in the last few weeks a new feature that allows you to, there's a camera now inside the Mix Halo app. And so in addition to streaming audio, you can open this camera and take video that will instantly merge the audio that you're streaming. So if you're at a, an NBA game and you want to post a video on Instagram, of uh, you know Steph Curry pulling up and hitting a three, and Mark Jackson goes, you know, Mama, there goes that man, right? Your Instagram post is going to have him saying that. That audio also. You yeah, got it. <laughs> and it's like instantaneously available. Got so it. there is kind of this virtuous cycle where we're also contributing to like, uh, you know, more data uh, going through and like more and more of a need for 5G. But this is why you know we're glad that the ecosystem is developing at the you know the rate that it is. Got it. Okay. There are, um, there are some applications, like with augmented reality in particular, where we would have to prioritize traffic for it to work yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing that with, with projects we're trying to do with vendors. Yeah, and I'm trying to uh, project myself, and because we are in T-Mobile, we are working on how do you enable um, you know, uh, API-based access to some of these APIs and all that. So, I'm just trying to project myself into future and seeing at some at what point do you guys see the need for automated infrastructure setup like you were alluding to earlier. So I'm just trying to get a sense for that. But thank you for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. So based based on your current development, the things that you've done, uh, developing applications solutions for 5G. If we were able to give you a magic wand to solve one of your roadblocks, what would that roadblock be that you'd want to just hit it with the stick? Starlink. <clears throat> there you go. I said it. Um, so for, for you know, truly the application that's out there that you know, who knows when it's going to be executed is global 5G, right? So you can access 5G. In a, in a robust manner at scale anywhere in, in the globe. But with, without having to put up towers everywhere, um, you know, marrying Starlink, in this case, with T-Mobile, I think, is going to accelerate the way that everybody, because everybody's going to turn around and go, we want that tomorrow, right? and it's not necessarily available. But I think it's going to accelerate investment into other global solutions, 5G solutions. And I think that's, that's where you know, the goal of achieving that as soon as possible that enables all of what we've talked about today is really, from my perspective, where we're, we're going to, you know, it's going to be the aha moment, right? I, that's, that's my 
personal. My my answer is it's, it's actually quite similar with with like our own little spin on it. So you know when you talk about baseball stadiums. Um, they're usually pretty well equipped and they're in a major urban area. They've got additional investment that's been made. A lot of these music festivals pop up in like random polo fields, right? It's just like you're just like in the middle of nowhere. Um, and so to not have to rely on cows coming in or additional infrastructure, like, yeah, if I, I mean, if we're really in magic wand territory, that's, that's how I'm waving my wand. There, there's, um, I, I think it's a, future set of 5G, but there's a broad, like a broadcast mode. So like in the Mix Halo example, everybody who's in the audience who's using Mix Halo is getting individual stream from our network, right? And so our network is going, I'm going to serve you, then you, then you, then you, and it's going back and forth really quickly to send that data. In a broadcast model, you can all get the same signal that would open up a ton of stuff we could do with live events. Yeah, when I look at it, uh, a little less on the signal, you know, expanding uh, 5G is definitely uh, you know, general kind of goal and direction. Uh, you touched a lot on consumption, both, uh, and, uh, both uh, consuming data, uh, sending data. And one of the areas that we're hearing a lot of interest in is edge productivity that uh, um, Corey, I think, mentioned Edge as well, is that um, I think there's going to be a growing demand. Um, I'm already starting to hear it from some of the studios that we work with for the ability of a certain amount of uh, production units um, at uh, Edge deployments. Um, that uh, because of signal, because of uh, um, various uh, data demands, um, uh, fulfilling smaller uh, um, sports venues uh, where you need a portable edge uh, environment. So I think those are going to be some of, again, I'm an infrastructure person by background, but I think those are going to be some of the things that um, people are going to want to start to expand uh, and take advantage of from events, from uh, production from uh, um, on-site uh, um, shoots, uh, location activities, um, uh, and, and reflect things that, uh, uh, with a number of studios, uh, as I said, that um, we're already being asked for. Yeah, that, that I think that edge infrastructure would be one of my magic wand yeah. things. So the thing about edge is it has to be local everywhere. Right, and there's some sort of threshold for that. If I could open that up for startups, anytime you can offer quicker, fa uh, closer, faster, people will take it. There's no going back from closer, faster. All right, looks like we have another question. Hi, I'm, I'm Jim. I just want to say thank you for the presentations. They're great. Um, Corey, I recently had the experience of going to listen to Evanescence at Climate Pledge Arena. and. Yes, my children give me a lot of stick about that. <laughs> but while I was there, I really wanted to listen to Amy Lee sing My Immortal rather than the 10,000 other people who are there with me. So I'm ready for my first try, not the second. Um, I very much appreciate the way you all are looking at problems and coming up with solutions. Very often these talks are about oh, all this wonderful tech, but it's not what are the problems we're solving. But one of the things that bothers me a little bit is you can't get past the Nyquist theorem. There's only so much data you can push through these pipes. Today, for instance, my two daughters who live on opposite coasts spent the entire day just with their videos on while they were doing their various jobs. And the moment you give them this, the kids especially are going to use it. What are the limits that you see to 5G? What, how much can you actually do all this stuff? Because if everybody's running 4K video at 60 frames a second, that's going to swamp your system. <laughs> yeah. It's not a big deal. It'll get fixed. I mean, think about it. There's, you know, if, if you look at, you know, go back 20 years and, you know, you could maybe watch the moon, the, the Mars explorer crash into Mars, you know, on this big of a video frame. I mean, there's a lot of smart people who work here who will absolutely figure this out, and uh, we'll get to the kind of scale that you know, we all think is gonna drive this industry forward. So I, uh, you know, I have no doubt that we're gonna get there probably sooner rather than later. Yeah, we work in an environment where you know, terabits of data are common, and uh, huge amounts of uh, data content, and one of the things that we're seeing that uh, give us studios what they're trying to take advantage of is the ability to centralize that content. So we've talked a lot about transmitting uh, files, transmitting uh, large-scale data, 
Um, one of the advantages that uh, um, we're seeing that uh, the studios we work with want to take uh, utilize is that data is centralized, but the ability to stream the pixels rather than the actual content from the way we, we approach it uh, and not have to actually send a file, uh, essentially uh, store a file instead for day-to-day -day manipulation, day-to-day -day, um, uh, editing and, and modifications uh, are one of the attractions of 5G. It gives the ability of centralizing, but again, work, working on the applications that are manipulating that data. So each of us has a slightly different uh, focus point um, the, for the studios we're working with, they're trying not to use 5G for data transmission, but rather access with applications, centralized data that is being modified and, and updated uh, um, by the editors, by the artists in, in the production. So I think you know, as each of these different categories go in, uh, that one of the areas that uh, we're starting to see is um, leveraging 5G for productivity, but not for data transfer. We've got another question. Great, great discussion here today. I was just curious, um, there's been some discussion about limitations of existing bandwidth where each of you see private LTE or private 5G in specific locations really adding value to each of your solutions. Yeah, I, I mean, we think about this a lot because there's a lot of this in the arena and stadium space. Um, and so as we wait for you know, these problems to be solved in other ways, it just kind of gives us extra comfort if there's edge or private 5G that's there um, because we know there's going to be such a dense concentration of people trying to use these technologies. So that's on our minds a lot. Have you done any deployments with private LTE so far? Yeah, we have. Yeah. Yeah, we've actually done uh, some real-time activity where events like this, uh, you bring in uh, the technology, you're hoping to showcase uh, certain capabilities, the internet service at the event is either less than desirable or goes out at the times that you need it. And we've been able to showcase our own technology, our partners' uh, technology utilizing 5G. And to me, that's an example where we benefited directly from uh, practical application in event scenarios. I do a lot of major events. My team is about to jump on a plane and go to IBC in uh, Europe. Uh, so we're used to uh, venues that have traditionally been challenges. And this is where I'm seeing even in practical use cases um, for what we do in just showcasing our technology that it's opened up new ways of really delivering at the experience we want to deliver. That's the key for our, uh, our entire focus of why 5G versus prior versions matters. It gives the experience that we want to make sure the end user is, is gaining, which is, wow, this seems just like my desktop. And, and I think that's some of the wow factors that have occurred as we've seen these transitions and, and the utilization of 5G. Oh, we got another question. Hi, I'm Rob. Uh, I work in the digital twin space. And yeah, like everybody else, I want to use unlimited bandwidth and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, a lot of times when people think of digital twins, they kind of think about how, how we've been doing this IoT stuff for a long time. And so there's that twinning, right, which is just synchronizing from the real thing to the virtual thing. But back to the whole presence deal, as the digital twins become avatars of people and stuff like that, I'm imagining just a, a, new, a whole new level of insane bandwidth usage. And I was curious about, you know, you talked about how you live view, you do the bonding to get all that extra bandwidth. And you talked about prioritizing and agents and things like that. And I'm, I'm, I don't know if it's just talk or, you know, you know, at some point in the future when would end users have more control of that prioritization or whatever, if that makes sense. Or, or having say, hey, I need to dynamically bond all these together for me and I'm gonna pay some money for it, or whatever. Right, have you seen the, um, I hate to bring this up, but the, the Metaverse commercial with the cyclists? Yeah. Okay, Yeah. so that to me is a really good example of, because it, it takes a lot to, to have 100 avatars doing a virtual Tour de France, right? Um, and your connectivity, if, you're, if your bike is plugged into a, you know, plugged into a machine ultimately that tracks all of your data, and then put your avatar in the middle of that, you know, of that tour to France, if you will. That's where I think, you know, that's where I think 
you'll, you'll have people who are gonna say, hey, listen, I want this experience. It's gonna take this amount of bandwidth for me to get it. Absolutely pay for it. Okay. And, and you know, I don't know what the plans are for, for T-Mobile, but dialing it up and down, I don't know. That might be an option. Um, yeah. So I, I, I see a lot of applications, especially in the virtual space, where, where 5G will be absolutely you know, a, a big piece of that. It, it, this brings up something else, which is like the, the, visu the visual digital twin. So you, digital twins are usually like of equipment and of sure. running. Right. But, but as the metaverse opens up, we need like our own digital twins. And that takes a lot of bandwidth. I, uh, we've got a new company coming into the lab, which is like a reverse Pixar. So they take volumetric video view. So Pixar creates beautiful video by building um, characters from the skeleton out, right? So they create a skeleton and they layer on muscles and, and skin, and so it looks very realistic. This company does the, re they're, they're former Pixar guys, but they do the reverse. We take a three-dimensional video view and then it skeletonizes from the video backwards. The purpose of that, there's sort of two things that come out of it. The main purpose was it makes it more portable to go over a network without sucking up the bandwidth. So you get that full avatar, you know, realistic avatar experience without crushing the network. So I think the technology will improve to, to in a weird way, T-Mobile, uh, 5G will open up the door to things that will then it sort of like optimize out. The second thing that they can do with this technology is now that I've got the skeletonized version of your avatar, you can make it do things that you're not doing. Sure. Right. That's and cool. Digitizing, like, if I was going to create this space digitally, I just create this space in a digital world from the ground up that's very time consuming and data intensive. But if I can digi digital tw take, convert that from the real world, I have a better starting place and they can get a lot of the data out of it. Yeah, makes sense. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so, I mean, it's hard because I, I, I'm the moderator and not a panelist, but I think hearing these conversations, it's, you know, I think, you know, we're in the early days of 5G. I think, you know, the network will continue to make advancements in how it manages uh, our bandwidth, how it optimizes, uh, just like we did with LTE. Uh, and then I think also in terms of all the other players in the ecosystem, right? Where do you store data? Where do you process it? When do you send it? When do you not need to send it? Um, I think that's what we're learning as we bring in these use cases and, and see, because I don't think anybody quite has that crystal ball yet. But I think it's all possible. I, I think in the end, we'll, we'll figure out the technology to, to, to make all this all this work and to, to bring these to life. Yeah, that's why it's so important to continue building out the ecosystem and Absolutely. bringing more and more people in who are going to make those contributions. And it's exciting. We, we couldn't have foreseen Mix Halo, right? Like now it's a thing. Right. We have to think about how do we make this work better on our network. I mean, I think, you know, what I said before about generational, everybody here is an early adopter, right? Or we're in the space of being early adopters, which is always with any technology, you find people that gravitate towards it because they look at the possibilities that it can be, become or that you can apply it to. And I think, you know, you sit in a room and you know, there's 100 people here or whatever. Well, in two years, there'll be 1,000 people sitting here going, I was an early adopter. And be like, you weren't at the last one we did. Like, you were, didn't go to the summer series. You went to, like, the 2024 winter solstice version <laughs> and you know so i didn't you know you're not on the list but yeah that's kind of the way i look at it so <laughs> we have a couple more minutes any other questions from the audience okay well we give the folks here a minute maybe to get some last questions uh we, we've talked about um the things that we need to solve kind of going forward. What has the, I guess, the entertainment industry been doing to prepare for 5G? I mean, we've been talking about it and anticipating <laughs> for quite some time. Uh, so what, has, what have you guys been doing to prepare for it? Maybe what have you done right? What, did, what surprised <laughs> you? So it almost brings me back to uh, where uh, I kind of opened with uh, in the conversation. I think uh, uh, the entertainment industry wasn't necessarily prepared for 5G. I think uh, we all found ourselves in uh, various roles and responsibilities suddenly at home. 
Uh, that I remember working with one global broadcaster uh, that had news that many of you depend on every evening that needed to be still on air, but all of a sudden everybody had to be at home. And uh, in some of the things that we did with them, you know, on a Monday, you do the fast POC. On a Tuesday, implementation. It was uh, that level of, uh, of challenge. What we're starting to see now is the aha moment, if you will, of, oh, I don't necessarily need to go back to uh, the studio or back to um, uh, the office, that so I can actually continue to be productive. I've learned ways of becoming productive. And in the uh, last events, uh, um, one just a few weeks ago uh, in uh, Burbank that we did, where we had the T-Mobile uh, um, 5G setup that uh, enabled us to showcase some of our technology, uh, there were a lot of wow, yeah, I've been starting to think about how I could do. And, and it was a lot of brainstorming ideas of, do you think I could use 5G to do this? Can I use your technology also to do that? There's the, uh, the change that I'm seeing is I want to shift from I had to go home into what's that next cool thing that I can do instead? And, and I think that's what this is starting to open up is, uh, again, just a different way of thinking about how to be productive. The, the, the technology is not the enabler. The excitement and the energy that I see in the uh, folks that we work with in the entertainment industry is really in that, what is another way I could do what I used to do? And, and I think that's what we're starting to see as, as the beginnings, as even we showcase what can be done. So in live entertainment, music and live sports, there's, there's kind of a line that is drawn. Like I, every day I speak to five or six people from you know, five or six arenas or stadiums, CTOs, GMs, SVPs, et cetera. And there's really a spectrum. So like Christian Lau, CTO at Bank of California Stadium in LA, like on the cutting edge, wants to do everything that's new and push the boundaries. The folks at Climate Pledge, it's an amazing group, and they're getting their hands on everything that they can. There are a lot of people out there who just believe, like, well, we're selling tickets, so we don't really need to do anything differently. Um, the pandemic scared some of them because it was, it was difficult to see empty seats, but they feel like that's all coming back. And obviously, like, I believe that they're wrong. Um, but um, a lot of folks aren't doing what they should be to, to prepare and to... I think a better way to think about it is to leverage 5G, really, um, and to take advantage of it and deliver these amazing fan experiences. And, um, you know, in the short term, they'll have to pay a price for that and play catch up later. Yeah. I mean, and besides missing out on like, cool experiences for their fans, there's huge opportunity from advertisement and revenue when you think about yeah. what they were just going to miss out on. Yeah, you have to sell tickets first and foremost, table stakes, because if you don't, you're not going to sell concessions, you're not going to sell merch. You're not going to, you know, do, do well with your season tickets next year. You're not going to get all the social posts you want and develop the brand. Like, it all starts with the live experience. Yeah, I think, so, secondhand, but through watching uh, the team I'm on work with, a major studio, they're trying to do the same entertainment they're doing now, but faster. So, in, uh, the example you gave is the most prominent one I can think of where, they're getting the content from remote locations home to be edited quicker. And so the editors are more part of the process, but they're still trying to do the same entertainment, just more efficiently. They haven't cracked the, wait a minute, what if we can show something from any angle? Or they, what if the user gets to be more interactive? Like they haven't quite, they want to keep doing what they're doing. They haven't quite cracked like, oh wait, there's a new, venue here, or there's no opportunity for how you experience something. Yeah, you hit a, a key thing that I think is one of the exciting points that uh, uh, a number of uh, studios have shared with us as they play with this is exactly that interaction. The, the TV show, the episode you see on Netflix or other has potentials to become much more interactive. We're seeing game development and gaming come over into uh, general production. The desire to make somebody and almost tear down that, the, that fifth wall and, and make somebody a part of the production is a key thing that um, I'm hearing from a lot of studios of exactly that. How, how can we start to use these tools to create an immersive, interactive environment that some of the traditional technologies that have delivered um, entertainment content to home just aren't prepared to do. 
In, in, back, back to what Corey was like, people yeah. always want to keep doing what they're doing, particularly if they're good at it. My experience with Mix Halo going to a live game event, once you get used to that feed of live commentary, you pull your earbuds out, you might be sitting in the third row, you feel like you left the game. It is so much more of an empty experience without that enhancement, and I can't see that not going other places. Yeah, so what, so going back to the original, what did we do well in prep, for preparation to use 5G? 4K, HDR, highest quality video that we can deliver at, and this is not a sales budget, at a number of different price points. So you can spend $1,500 over 5G and deliver you know, high quality video. You could spend $20,000 and do the same thing with more features, more feeds, all the different things. So we really took 5G to heart and made it available across the spectrum of you know, video contribution at lots of price points for people who are doing weddings to people who are doing Remy productions for, you know, for live sports events. And I think that's, if, if getting out ahead of the curve is something that, you know, that, that we're talking about, that's, that's what we did to get out ahead of the curve. All right, one last check for our audience. Any final questions? Oh, we got one. Sure. Um, I think while we're talking about kind of pushing the limits and also imagining the kind of advanced use cases where people are not using, for high demand um, use cases like live video and multiple streams where we use cellular networks as a data pipe, and as you said, we just use whatever is available, how much value it will bring to have a deterministic or even programmable connectivity of the data pipe just to be kind of closing the loop and you could program what you want and how you want that data pipe to behave according to your need dynamically. Do you see a future in that or you just say it's a nice to have and you don't need those? So if I could play with a dial that gave me the low latency and uh, ensure that I hit the frame rates that I'm looking for, uh, I'm all in. Uh, so that that's a... Uh, in the area that um, we work in, uh, that uh, I'm editing, uh, you know, dailies. I'm, I'm working on uh, um, colorization. Uh, the frame rates matter. The low latency matters. Uh, consistent uh, signal matters. Um, I think those are the business opportunities of 5G. Uh, the tools that uh, you may find power users are going to want to look for uh, as part of that. Um, we mentioned here uh, areas that I've seen have been that instantaneous editing. The, the content is maintained in one location, but I'm using a remote desktop and remote applications to do instantaneous editing, in some cases right while I'm at the event. And so I could see demands and interests for and give me the ability to set the dial for you know the performance characteristics I want, and you know we're, we're now kind of venturing into uh, that commercial use of 5G, and I think that just as people have paid for high bandwidth on ISP uh, type of capabilities, you'll see those kinds of demands and expectations as well. So just so we actually LiveView has frame accurate delivery of of isolated feeds with deterministic latency, uh, half a second. Um, so that's part of one of the one of the products that we we deliver. Um, so we're doing that today over 5G. 5G, it's five. So would you be limited by the available performance of the network at that point in time, or you could also do you program the network yourself? You can you can dial it up and down. You can dial your latency your latency and your you can dial it up and down. So. So we also have HEVC compression. So when we're working within, you know, more limited bandwidth, same thing. So you know, it all depends upon what network's available and what your needs are. So we can do up to f off of one unit, um, our LU800. Um, we can do up to four concurrent, isolated, low latency, 4K deterministic. You know, dial up deterministic uh, latency. So it'll be um, highly useful to, to convert this data pipe into a programmable connectivity platform if you can have a dial. I, I mean, yeah. yeah, basically, yeah, you can. 
we can do that for you. Yeah, I think it, it boils down to is the application uh, that's on 5G uh, doing certain things? Are there things that I want in, in my 5G pipe? And, I, and both of those, I think, are directions that uh, people are going to want to manipulate uh, just as they do today with other uh, connectivity. So it's, it's a matter of what's my networking strength of what's available to me when I'm doing production, what's my user experience when I'm consuming uh, materials, what do I need from my provider, what do I need from application tools. And I, you know, great answer on what application tools can do right now to assist. Uh, is that I, I think as other applications and as these dials become available within uh, T-Mobile services and things like that, that I think those are just natural progressions all the way across. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to take the last question. Uh, it's really more of a call to action for you guys to give our early adopters, our innovators here in the audience, on what can they do to help push 5G for entertainment forward. I'd say you know, the first step, if you haven't played with it, if you haven't uh, um, started to work with uh, 5G for uh, general connectivity, for just your apps, for uh, um, the different uh, use in your phone, um, start. Uh, if you don't have a 5G uh, phone, I do not work for T-Mobile, but uh, you know, I, I think it's a, a great uh, next direction as well to uh, take a look at uh, for uh, personal productivity for the connectivity as a professional level. If you're doing application work, if you're doing uh, um, any sort of remote uh, connectivity, that uh, you know, I'll invite you to take a look at our technology here uh, and uh, um, see how you can utilize 5G for remote connections and be just as productive when you're on the road as you are sitting at home in front of your um, uh, computer uh, or uh, laptop or in the office in front of those same devices. Yeah, I think it's all about embracing use cases that leverage 5G. So if anybody wants to write to your local venue and demand that they have Mix Halo available, feel free and do that. <laughs> there you go. I want my Mix Halo. Is that what you that's, came up with? That's it. You, came, you just came up with it. <laughs> hey. Yeah, I was going to say go to a Mix Halo concert and tell your friends about it. That's, that's right. Um, I just lost my train of thought for a second. So here's what I would do. All of you have, all of you are here because you've got ideas in your head that you want to, you've got applications for 5G that if you get, see people like whiteboard sessions, right? Go to a whiteboard session. What, how are you doing a, a workflow? Whatever the workflow is today, put it up on a whiteboard, draw a line in the middle, and then show the workflow with 5G and sit people down and go, look at this, and there's a hell of a lot more boxes over here, and look at this, and look at the simplification of what we can do, and not just simplification, but, and by the way, as you head out to distribution, look at the scale that we can get that you can't get here. So everybody sits there and goes, let's do a whiteboard session. Well, you know what, do a whiteboard session, and bring people in, the people that you need to influence wherever it is that you work, and show them and ask them, to, ask them to punch holes in the way you're doing something today and what the dollar sign is behind that and what the human resource cost is and what you can do with 5G. And I guarantee you, you'll get people who will go, oh, really? I didn't know that. And then now you can say you told them how to do it. Great. Well, thanks, Tom. And you know, we actually have a lot of great whiteboards here. So. <laughs> I know, it's the most we whiteboarded place I've ever seen. You should have a wall, you should do a whiteboard session up there. We should. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, and that's exactly, we, we want to wa have a whiteboard session with you, and you can innovate with us here at the 5G Hub. So you can go to our website, techexperience.com, submit your project, submit your innovation. Uh, we have the awesome facility, the technology, as you can see, the radios on the wall, um, and we have the experts here to help bring that innovation to life. Uh, hopefully within entertainment. So, <laughs> so definitely check us out, innovate with us, and then we will be back here in next week on Tuesday for our next series, uh, 5G and IoT uh, for manufacturing. So we'll talk about operational efficiencies, uh, new ways to improve, improve productivity, uh, so you won't want to miss that. So please go to our website and register again at techexperience.com. So let's give a round of applause to our audience. Yeah. And to our panelists. <laughs> sorry, sorry, to our panelists. <laughs>
great discussion. And uh, we have still drinks and food. And again, we have a demo there in the back if you want to check it out. So enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.